What is up guys, Carl here. It's time for a new map guide. This is the throne room of the castle. That's what the map's called, throne room. On uh, this map you have two crystals here in the middle, as you can see. And uh, the map is a mirror map, so everything on this side is the same, but mirrored on this side. So if we have a look on the map, as you can see there are the two crystals here in the middle, where I am. You have one entrance right in front of us, as you can see, behind those uh, thrones. You have three entrances on each side. And uh, the middle one will be forced into this little funnel. This one right here will take that route, and these guys will take this route. So, um, if we take a look at the chests, there is one over here, they give you 70, so you have enough for some uh, nice towers to begin with. There are four to start off with up here, these two on each side will respawn, but the ones on the throne will not, so be sure to take these because they will won't be accessible later. So now we have a bunch of mana to spend. So if we begin to take a look at where these enemies will actually walk. So you have uh, the center door. So you can see up here. It has two staircases that lead into two staircases that leads into this, which is close to uh, our crystal. The good thing about this place is that uh, both the enemies from that door, the side door I mentioned up there, and the ones from this and of course from that door, will walk down these stairs and uh, as a squire we can do something fun up here. So to start off to protect this area, which as I said will take care of these three doors, we can start off with a slice and dice tower. This should take care of any any anyone trying to get close here and they will get stuck and sliced to death. So uh, to start off with this should be good. If you're playing the apprentice you uh, may want to place some, uh, some blockades on uh, each side and place your towers back here. As you can see there are orcs coming and the small guys as well, so having some towers back here and your walls up here will keep them safe from uh, any orc who swings his sword or axe or whatever he has, so he can't damage your towers. But this setup should um, keep the middle safe. And if we take a look on uh, the back door as I'm gonna call it by those windows. We have this door, some might uh, walk up the back stairs and head up here. But uh, to start off with, we want to place a uh, bouncing betty, as I call them, <coughs> right about here. So this should take care, if it doesn't kill them by walking into them, any small goblins or such should be bounced off and down here. But playing on normal and you're being specced uh, a bit on both, this should take care of it. We do have some vivers coming later on, which we want to take care of. But uh, <laughs> for now we'll just keep this one to uh, protect from the small guys. And up here. Whoops. Up here we'll do the same setup. As I mentioned I like having the same setup on both sides so I know that if this one fails or lets Goblin through this one will do the same. Of course the placement can be different on both sides but the general idea is that uh, if a Goblin slip past and somehow walk down these stairs which they shouldn't be able to do 
it will be the same on that side, so we want to do the same reinforcement on each side. Uh, we will have Bivers, said, and we will have Ogres. So, uh, having covered the back door and the front door, we want to focus on the side doors, which are these. So, uh, let's start off by placing one slice and dice on this side. And uh, what you want to do is <coughs> be sure to place it close enough that uh, anyone can't pass through. As you can see, I get stuck since uh, this one actually goes out far enough to create a blockade right there. So the small guys can't slip past it. We uh, want to place another slice and dice over here later on. So uh, this should take care of anyone. Trying to get close, and of course the the ogre is coming. And uh, let's uh, let's place a uh, normal blockade right here to just make sure that they aren't getting too close, like so. Of course, now we don't have enough to do another slice and dice tower. So what we'll do is place a Bouncing Betty on this side, or to save some mana, since uh, we lose half the mana. So if I'm gonna sell this one now on the same build phase, we will keep our uh, the full amount. But if I sell it the next round, even if it hasn't taken any damage, we will only get 15 back. So what we can do is to uh, start off by building these regular blockades. <laughs> now we've saved 20 mana from uh, not building two bouncies. And we can take care of this with some demonic blade slashing. So uh, that should be it. Covered the front door, the side doors and the back doors. And we've taken all the chests. So uh, yeah, let's get it on. Let's start off by Getting some frame rate back. And uh, we can take care of these guys. They are leveled up, as you can see. But that won't be any problem. Doing some hack and slash, as you can see. Oops. That was not good, as you can see, that uh, little goblin was able to pass through. Wasn't quite optimal. What could have happened is that uh, the slicing dice didn't spin up fast enough. Let's see what happens with uh, this cobalt. But all these seem to be taken care of. Might just been some uh, something funny going on here with letting him through. Of course, we uh, want to keep our crystal safe since we will get point uh, point one. Or 1.3 extra extra XP for keeping it alive. Or not 1.3 extra, but 0.3 extra XP. 1.3 bonus. So it should be it. There is two guys left. And uh, can do is give this one a boost. And hurry to the other side so we can get the wave bonus. If we kill these guys before a certain amount of time, we will get an extra bonus. So it could be a good idea to give him a little spanking. There we have it. Pretty easy the first wave. So you can see we got 103 seconds on a time bonus. Now we have two wyverns coming from each side. <coughs> they will fly in a pretty much straight path over here. What you could do as an apprentice is to uh, is to place some uh, magic towers up here, magic missile towers or any other fun towers, but the problem with playing as a squire is that even if we place a tower here, the harpoons aren't fast enough, so they will shoot, let's say, at the, they find a wyvern about here. 
And they will target this area and shoot the harpoon. But since the harpoon is traveling so slow, it won't be able to hit the viber because it has just kept on flying towards the crystal. So uh, these harpoon towers are good for later on, but for now what we want to do to take care of the wyverns is to place a little harpoon tower right about here. So this will take care of the wyverns flying and it has a pretty much straight view uh, or cone of distance towards the, the flying wyverns. So instead of shooting them at the side, it shoots them head on. So that should be good, but we uh, the harpoon towers aren't as safe as the magic missile towers or any apprentice missile tower. So um, we want to be sure to keep an eye out for anyone getting close and keep them away. So we have a lot of extra extra mana crystals left. So let's do a mirror. Let's sell this one and put up a little slice and dice about here. As you can see, same here. This one is even closer. There is probably a sweet spot where they can't get past, but it's further this side. So it takes care of anyone going closer to the right side of the path, if you understood that. Anyhow, we have another chest about here. What we could do is uh, we probably won't have enough to give ourselves two uh, slice and dice towers. But what we can do is uh, put up some harpoon towers. Since the harpoon towers goes through the ranks of enemies, it's a pretty good weapon to have when... Uh, the enemies are walking in a straight path, which they will be doing on the sides here, as I'm going to show you. So let's bring this on. So we do actually have enough to bring up two slice and dices, but for now we should be enough with one slice and dice and one blockade. And uh, these harpoon towers up here will actually do some damage. They will shoot down towards the center, they will shoot over here. And if I place this correctly, they will shoot to the other side. As you can see here, these enemies will walk in pretty much a straight line here. So the harpoon will shoot at them and pass through all of them. Or some of them at least. So let's just build... Another harpoon tower about here. <laughs> Sorry for any coughing. Having kind of a sore throat, but I want to give you this video. So we don't have enough for one more actually. So, but one should be good. Still have uh, 50. We could place a uh, replace one of these with a with a bouncy, but um, for now we'll just keep this set up. <coughs> so let's see if we can see some vibers coming. We can have a look at these harpoon towers in action. As you can see, they didn't even get close to the bounce blockade. See if we can see another harpoon coming here. Went through most of them. Of course, this side is probably doing a lot better since it has two of them. Let's have a look if our defenses work against the wyverns here. So you can see these ones are targeting the guys up here, but you need to focus. This one is firing. Come on. Yep, took care of them just in time. So we might just put up one more here in the center to be sure that it take care, takes care of the wyverns. But for now we seem to be good. So let's do a mirror matchup right here. 
put up another tower. Why won't it let me? Uh, let's place it back here, whatever. Our defenses don't seem to be letting anyone through. So you can see this one is slicing away. Let's pick up some mana crystals and uh, we can replace one of the these side towers with a uh, with these slice and dice. We still have um, 26 defense units left, so um, should be good. There is a boss coming at the end of uh, at the end of the last wave, so um, we'll go more into detail on that later on. Now we reach the cap, so what we could do is let's give these a boost, and uh, since the guys on the other side got taken care of by the slicing dice, let's attack these ones, so uh, we'll get the time bonus, hopefully at least. Of course, you could just could just um, stay back and get the not taking any damage, but that's your choice. <coughs> Sorry about that. So, whoops. And if you're playing on multiplayer, you probably know this feature. If you play, press C when playing on PC, you will place a, a target indicator. So. If you're holding this side and you need backup from your friends, and if you're not using uh, some kind of voiceover chat program, you should place these ones so that they will know that there's a problem over here. So let's replace this one with another slice and ice. And as I said, we do have a boss, so we might even consider that when building these things. The boss, if I'm not mistaken, is gonna come from uh, the other side. He's a goblin mech, so he's pretty mean and uh, can take quite a punch. He will actually push these back, so he'll just walk up here. Now you can see some guys might get through here, so could be a problem. We could play some walls back here. Or we could place a harpoon tower. But the guy, the boss, will uh, walk up here and he will push these back. They will still do damage to him, but they will be pushed back and he will start attacking them. And he has quite a range on his uh, double blades. So uh, even standing back here, you might take damage from him. He does have target seeking missiles, so. You have to take that into consideration that you can't just stand stand back and, and repair stuff since he will his missiles will attack you. So let's see what else can we do. During this round we could probably play some more uh, some more defenses so that we fill up our our unit cap. see here this one seems to be holding we might just give it a little boost so that it's safe for the future everything on this side looks good so uh, let's place uh, let's see if we can place another harpoon tower up here this one might be a bit too far ahead, but these harpoon towers should take care of it. So um, should be good. You could do some uh, some harpoon tower Tetris if you like, and try to find some place where you can place all three of them by the sides. But for now, we'll just go by pl placing it out here. We still have uh, 
four defense units left. We can't build any more harpoon towers. But what we could do is uh, actually let's see here. Could place a bouncy blockade. The guy will be coming from this side, so when uh, the boss wave starts, we might want to move one of these to the other side to uh, give it an extra edge. Let's place a bouncy up here. So now we have maxed out our defense units. This one has a double protection so uh, when the boss comes we can just sell this one and uh, place another harpoon tower back here. This should be good. There are some mana crystals stuck behind here. So they're only one mana each. So they aren't the most awesome crystals, but anyhow, we can do some uh, upgrading while the combat phase is in action. So let's give this one a boost. And let's see if we can show these harpoon towers attacking. They are even too slow when attacking these guys, they are too slow to turn around, but. The center is covering this place pretty well. As you can see here, we're making some um, goblin uh, sausages by splashing them up into bits. Let's give this one a boost. Right now, the only, the only concern we want to have is keeping everything repaired and uh, just keeping upgrading it. And let's see if we can avoid any archers so we won't take any damage. Give us some extra XP boost. Let's upgrade this one. And let's upgrade this one. It will be pretty good against the ogre come later on. The ogres could come here in the middle, but they could also decide to take the side path. So they're coming up here, but then we will have the harpoon towers covering this area. So we have a bunch of mana crystals staying up here. So I believe we do have uh, ninjas the next round. But if you're not close enough and uh, you're not attacking them, as for example shooting at them as a huntress, they uh, should just start walking up to the tower and attacking that slice and dice tower. So we want to stay away from them. How are we doing? There's one guy back here. So let's go for the not taking any damage. And uh, hoping for at least some sort of some sort of wave time bonus. Probably be lower than uh, then if we attack him, but we'll get the not take any damage bonus. As you can see, these are pretty slow, so they're shooting behind him. But when you have a bunch of enemies walking here, it should be enough. This guy is taking his sweet ass time. Woohoo! Let's now upgrade this one. Let's think some more and give some more uh, damage and HP to our character or to our towers. Could do is uh, probably sell this. It isn't doing anything good at the moment. We still don't have enough to build another tower. So that's a shame. What we could do is when we see the boss coming, as we're gonna replace one of the harpoon towers place them on the other side. We uh, can move one of those and place a bouncing betty. Yes, it will go down, but it can do some sort of damage when uh, 
when the boss comes. So let's just pick up all these crystals. Can't see any green dots on the screen, so we have no upgrades down here. Let's upgrade these towers. Oh, shiny sword. Looks pretty cool. My demonic blade is better. Someone asked me in uh, a previous video what sword this was. This is the demonic training blade, which I believe you get from the the second boss, or the sorry, the first boss. This one is the second. So we have uh, three bosses in this game. You have the first, which is the demon lord, demon boss, whatever it's called. And then you have this goblin mech, which, the, which is the second one. And you have the last one, which I'm not going to spoil just yet. But it's pretty bad, eh? So we are upgraded, as you can see. We have vivers, we have ninjas, and we have... Ogres coming, so wanna make sure our defenses are healed up. Center one is blinking, so we could just heal that up a bit, but first we might wanna play some or upgrade something, but we don't have enough, so let's start off by repairing this and we can go collect some mana crystals. And repair this or upgrade this one later on. You can see the defenses are doing what they should. They aren't taking that much damage. Let's see what happens when the ogre comes. If our defenses are working. So we have one coming from over there. One coming from over there. So we do have um, big guys attacking these. But since we have a mirror matchup. We should be good. So if this side holds, this side is gonna hold. Otherwise we're gonna know that something needs to be done. So our back doors are taking quite a beating as you can see it's up here. And where did the other ogre go? Yeah, he's coming up on that side. So as you can see I hardly saw this guy before he went down. That's how good these harpoon towers are. At the moment. So you can see this ugly chap. He's walking up here. We do have summoners which we might need to take care of. Let's stay back and see if we can get the no taking damage bonus. You can see it's got... Yeah. Using the harpoon towers is pretty awesome. Did you huge amount of damage when... Uh, you have your towers upgraded. As you can see this wave whoa. These summoners are a bit too far back, so they aren't taking any damage, they are just attacking our tower, which needs an upgrade to repair. As usual we have some guys who doesn't want to play with other ones. Let's stay back and let our towers take care of him. Let me make short work of him. Of course, when uh, any enemies come up here and the towers are focused down here, they're not moving, so they will shoot them straight in their face. Come on, towers. What they could do is actually stay back here so we don't have to run back to the chest. It's gonna pop up here. Now we have the final wave with the boss. The the enemy charts or whatever you want to call them. This is gonna show where the boss is coming. But from the three times I've played this map, he always comes from the left side. So let's see. That's the same deal now. So let's upgrade this. And uh, are there any more crystals up here? Yes, there are two chests. And you do get a pretty awesome sword from uh, this guy. If you like Warhammer 40k, you're gonna like it. I might just use it to replace my 
my demonic training blade. But then again, so many people keep using that sword as their main. I don't know. I have never played a squire on uh, this boss and beat him. I actually played this map yesterday two times, and uh, I failed with the boss having like 1k left in H HP. So, um, he seems to be good to go. What we could do is make sure that all our harpoon towers are powered up. Of course, we want to replace one of them. So, as I said, I believe the guy will be coming from that direction. So, let's just upgrade one of the towers. Did I see? No, it was just my sword fooling me. I thought I saw some uh, upgrade here with the uh, arrows on the side. But that was not the case. We can have a look at the art style on this map as well. You have uh, pretty nice lighting. You have these chandeliers. You also have these church windows where you can see the crown over there. You have the huntress. You have some sort of tree of life. It's called that. Which also reflects on the ground. And you have the squire right there. Of course these are uh, images of the parents of these ones. So the legends of the land. Until we will beat the last boss when we will become the legends. There we have the monk and the apprentice. Some uh, flags. Kind of get the World of Warcraft art style feeling up from it. And yeah. Let's get some action going. We have 80 left, so... Um, need 120 to uh, bring something else up to second level. And uh, now we can just go in and hack a slash because we're probably going to take some damage from the last boss. So, let's just slice these guys. Oh, the ninja is doing huge amounts of damage, but let's stay in front of the harpoon towers. As you can see, the harpoon towers do huge amounts of damage against him as well. Oh, God, he's here. Let's just uh, bring these two guys up to power. The center is holding up pretty well, as you can see, it only lost. How much? Yeah, whoop. But 500. You can see this ninja pass through. We do not like that, but our harpoon towers give us some backup. And wyverns are being taken down. Where is the ogre? Ogre is up here. Oh. Doing some damage on our harpoon towers. We know like he that. Let's just bring this one up. Stop attacking me, you jerk. Ouch, ouch, ouch. There you go. And the other ogre went down. Harpoon towers are taking care of the wyverns. Let's see if they need some help now. But they should have enough, enough speed to um, shoot down two wyverns. This one focused, yeah. As you can see, these small ones almost got through, but we should be good enough. Slice back here and take out of all of the summoners. We don't want to get too far ahead, since we want to make sure that we can uh, that we can get some backup from the harpoon towers. About halfway through, our defenses are holding. The center one might, yeah, it needs some repairs badly. So, could try stay down here. We should be able to reach it, yeah. So we won't get interrupted by any archers shooting us from the side. And as people die, they also drop the oh. Do have a goblin who appears to have passed through. We don't like that, you bastard. 
Uh, as you can see, oh, this is not particularly good. So they are passing through. That little bouncy blockade wasn't placed good enough. So let's bring up one right about right about here. That should take care of any small goblins passing through. Have a few left, so let's pick up any crystals back here. And uh, we will have about 15 seconds to take care of the any upgrades you want between this wave and the boss. So doing as much as you can on the fly is good. What we want to do later on is try to uh, kite the enemy, so we want him to follow us uh, and try to keep him in an area where the harpoon towers can shoot him instead of letting him get close to the crystals. Because once he gets close to these barriers, he will be able to, uh, once he puts, uh, pushes them back, he will let uh, goblins come through, so keeping him away from those, keeping him somewhere in this general area is good. So let's stay about here and see if he comes on this side or the other side. We have prepared as much as possible. Again, we might want to sell this one, so I'm not going to upgrade it yet. Four, three, two, one. Da -da -da -da. You want to shoot him in that area? We don't have any ranged weapon. Rock an issue! As you can see, he's coming from that place, so let's sell this one and hurry up to the other side. Let's place it a bit to the side here and hurry up and let's try to kite him. As you can see, his blades are, uh, aren't doing a huge amount of damage, but they are keeping me back. So as you can see, this if he gets close to uh, the defenses, he will do quite some damage. Let's heal ourselves. As you can see, the Harpoon Towers are attacking him. We have already got him down about 10k. So just you keep attacking him and keep healing. Don't let him get too close to your towers and uh, be sure to have a look at your other defenses. Don't forget that you have other things to take care of. Come on, let's try to uh, force you to look behind yourself. Harpoon towers, come on, keep focus. We don't want to let him get too close because then he's gonna damage our harpoon towers. And letting the harpoon towers shoot him in the back will also gain us bonuses. Let's heal ourselves a bit. Oh! Don't press the middle mouse button, Wayne. Oh, this one is going pretty well. And he's down! There you go, you bastard. So, um, to keep him in this area, oh, to keep him in uh, this area, it's pretty, it was a pretty good spot. You might want to keep him. Oh, oh, I thought my keyboard was broke, but I can't actually walk in and under him. As you can see, I'm trying to get closer, but I can't. Anyhow, let's pick up all the crystals. As I said, keeping him in this area. Getting loads of frame rate drops, don't know what's up with that. 
Keeping in this area is a good choice. Might want to try to keep him somewhere around here. Or in far enough from uh, the Harpoon Tower so that the Harpoon Tower still can reach him. But he's not close enough to them so that he can spin around and do his, do his attack with the blades. And uh, as you saw in the cutscene, he does have a weak spot back here. So if we keep attacking him from this side, he will turn around and attack us. So the harpoon tower, the four harpoon towers we had up there, could just keep on shooting him in the back. So to summarize this map. You have two crystals here in the middle. You have... Let's see how many are there. There are five choke points. You have two large stairs on each side. Oh, don't know what's up with... I don't know if the new NVIDIA Battlefield 3 drivers are messing up something. Anyhow, you have two major choke points right here. You have uh, the left side where the boss is going to come, so you want to focus on that later on in the match. You have these backdoor entrances. You want to place some blockades and some towers right here, so that they can take care of any, any enemies coming from over here. Enemies coming in the middle, and if it has a wide enough cone of view, it will shoot at enemies on the other side. And uh, some enemies will walk up here. Again, some enemies walk there, mirror match, match up. They will join these guys coming from the center. And uh, go down these stairs where you should place some blockades. So this is your center choke point. You have two side choke points and two side choke points. So uh, for example, when playing the squire, you want to place a slice and dice here to take care of all the enemies coming from both sides. If you're playing the Apprentice, you want to place some blockades to block off this area and place your towers back here. And uh, you might place a uh, shock tower right here so that it can shock guys coming from this area, both on the sides and in the middle. And that should be able to take care of the center for you. You don't want to place anything on these sides because they will get attacked. Again, if you play the uh, if you play the monk or the huntress, you might want to play some traps here, but they could be hard to repair if you haven't got any traps or something to keep the enemies uh, back here. You do have a uh, pretty long area of uh, repair, or whatever you want to call it. So, placing something, uh, some traps, some gas traps, some snare auras, and uh, electric cars and such. Back here, you should be able to repair these and repair traps up here. And on this side, you have enemies coming from over here, and again over there. So, placing some blockades, Squire, you might want to place a, you can place a spike blockade or you can place a bounce blockade. You want to give it some towers back here, so that they can shoot again on that side, in the center. If you're playing as the apprentice, you want to focus your uh, deadly striker towers over here, so that they're able to shoot down this big guy. Place as many as possible, as many as you can afford with the uh, defense units. And uh, again, try to keep him away from... Uh, any any traps we'll place down here. So down here in these small funnels you want to place blockades. Playing the, the squire you want to play some slice and dice. You can survive on just two slice and dice so you can play some um, bouncy blockades but they might not hold as far as long as the slice and dice. So uh, placing some some uh, bouncy uh, in combination with your uh, harpoon towers, something like that. You should take care of that. If you're playing the apprentice, you want to play some uh, blockades and then your towers back here. Again, you should place them uh, 
some distance behind the walls so that the orcs can't reach them with their long distance attacks. You do have Vivers coming. So you have Vivers coming from there and Vivers coming from there. So you want to have something to take care of that. If you're playing the Huntress, you uh, might be able to take care of them with your, uh, with your regular rifle or uh, crossbow. But as the Squire, you uh, want to play some Harpoon Towers right about here, so that they can shoot down any Vivers coming in. Or Apprentice, these towers should be able to take care of the of the Vivers coming. But if you want to be on a safe side, you can play some towers back here. You could place one tower about here, facing that way. And one tower about here, or here, facing that way. That way they should be able to take care of anyone who's able to slip through the goblin, for example, who slipped through here or the goblin who slipped through there. They, they should be able to shoot those down. So it's just a last, last wall of defense. And when fighting the boss, you want to keep him away from your, uh, your traps. He uh, does push the larger traps back. If you're just using small traps, as uh, for example the Apprentice Tower, they might just be destroyed by his mega mega mech feats. So um, keeping him at a distance, as you can, as you noticed in the video, I was able to keep him in this area by attacking him and letting the towers do the thing. So that's about it. We uh, got two good drops. I'm not sure exactly what they do. But some, uh, let's call them better than average drops, boss drops from him. So um, this is a, might be something you want to farm. You get uh, quite a good score. As you can see, I got 41,000 score from playing this solo on normal. So playing this on the insane might be a good choice when uh, you want to farm some uh, money and such. And that should be it for this map. So. Uh, if you uh, have some uh, other ideas as far as playing a Huntress or Monk, which I've never tried on this map solo, be sure to post a comment if this, uh, if something I said about placing your traps or auras up here works. Or if you like the uh, setup I did, be sure to comment on that so I know if this is something that can be useful. Be sure to like the video if it helped you. And be sure to subscribe for more uh, Dungeon Defenders and other fun gaming stuff. So, uh, yeah guys, I will see you next time. Bye.